Hello and welcome to Citizens Forum. This is being filmed on Wednesday, October the 2nd in the Memorial Arena in downtown Victoria. Our guest in the first segment is Laura Wileby. Laura is organizing something that's very important, which is called the March Against Monsanto. You can just tell us when it's taking place and where. It's taking place uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, October the 12th. And uh, we all meet at the grounds of the legislature at around 1, 1 1.15. The march itself starts at 1.30. And, uh, but I'm going to have probably a guest speaker before then and maybe some you know, background music. I'd like people to gather and, and meet up with each other and exchange some, some ideas before the march. And then um, after the march, we rally again at the legislature uh, for guest speakers and some live entertainment. Hopefully a good afternoon. So October the 12th? October the 12th. Give me the time again. Uh, 1.30 is the march, uh, but uh, <coughs> to gather at least 15, 20 minutes before would be, would be great. Okay. And, I mean, uh, of all the important issues in the world, you know, this is certainly in the top five. It's, it's a huge, huge problem. Uh, our politicians allow it. The media doesn't inform us, so we're way behind. I mean, it, it's an oncoming disaster. So we've got some things to talk about. First, what's the march about? The march is a response to the use of uh, genetically modified organisms, which is uh, um, the mating of uh, uh, organisms uh, in ways that would occur totally unnaturally, like taking uh, the genes from a, a animal and putting into a plant. Um, things that have never been done before never on this done planet. Before. Taking fish genes and putting them in tomatoes, taking uh, scorpion genes and putting them into cabbages and, and that kind of thing. Rat genes into lettuce. You know, the, the goal is to create more food for the world and more abundance. No, wait, I would disagree with that's what they say the that's goal is. That's what they say. The goal that's isn't right. that. The goal is control of the world's food supply by the corporations. Exactly, and to make money, exactly. Because these are patented. Exactly, and, and, and the march against Monsanto specifically is because uh, Monsanto is the largest uh, owner of uh, genetically modified seed in the world and one of the largest supporters of genetically modified food. So that's why we go after Monsanto. What, uh, what genetically modified, I, can t I call them genetically contaminated, so I'll use that term if you don't mind a few times. That's so which genetically contaminated foods are on the market now? Well, there's specifically uh, two different kinds. Uh, one that's uh, uh, herbicide resistant, that's uh, created to uh, withstand the heavy spraying of um, the poisonous chemicals uh, to keep the, the weeds away. And the other kind of genetic, genetically modified crops, crops out there are to uh, actually make their own internal pesticide. They're made to, uh, so that when the, um, to resist the bugs that attack it. So once again, one is resistant to herbicides that they use and the other type creates its own pesticide. Exactly. Within it. Exactly. That we are then eating. That's true. Okay. Uh, so what I see you've got here is over 90% of soybeans in the United States, 85% of their corn, and probably the same in Canada, 95% of sugar beets. Uh, Canada grows genetically modified corn, soya, sugar beets, and it's canola. It's all over the market. It's yeah. flooded with it, yeah. Also concerns about meat and dairy because the animals are are eating this stuff. That's right, they're eating the genetically modified feed. And we can't count on um, Health Canada to protect us because Health Canada doesn't do their own independent testing. They accept the corporate owned science evidence that's given to them by the corporations trying to sell their food in Canada. And uh, they don't do the independent testing. They more or less just look it over and say, well, it looks good to us, and they let it in for the consumption by the, the Canadian public. So Walter, if I said Health Canada has been completely and totally corrupted, would you agree or disagree with that? Well, of course, and, and you know, what I always thought was interesting, you know, when I first started talking to Health Canada about other issues, was the fact that they didn't do any research, and you'd think, well, why not? We get, we're giving them, like, millions and millions of dollars a year. It's no. a massive bureaucracy. Billions. You know, they have the qualified staff. Why don't they do the research? You know, 
that, that's what we want. That's what Canadians want and need. So how is it they feel that they just will withhold it, will, will withhold the information? That they've been firing scientists, if anything. Exactly. It's, it's, you know, uh, yeah. so, you know, um, so they're it's acting not, like yeah. another corporation. So it's not Health Canada, really. It's the Prime Minister. And it's been the Prime Minister since, I guess, Chrétien, who was probably the Prime Minister when this came in, through an entire 10 or 12 years of Liberal government, yeah. and then another many years of Harper government. Well, if you, if you think back, and then, you know, the, in 1989, I think, uh, um, when, uh, was it the end of the Reagan era, the start of the Bush era, I can't remember, but they uh, fired the head of the EPA, and the, and the, the guy that was running Monsanto became became the head of the Environmental Protection Agency back in the 80s. So you knew that was the end. That was the end. There was no serious research going to occur in the United States. And of course, they had this stuff on, the, on you know, ready to tee up and go with. You know, so they knew what they were going to be bringing forward and it would be, could withstand no scrutiny. So what are the concerns with uh genetically modified foods? Numerous, numerous concerns, starting with their health. Uh, uh, it's not only been, genetically modified food has not only been correlated with health issues, it's proven science now that uh, it's in cause of uh, cancer, uh, inflammation of liver and kidneys, uh, immune uh, uh, dysfunctions, um, learning disabilities, it's creating new allergies. There's just so many health concerns. Uh, uh, well, let's take one of those, learning disabilities. Is there, is there concern or is there proof that there's... There's evidence there. It's, it's proven science now. Yeah, they have 20 years to experiment on the human population here now and they have evidence now to prove where these, uh, these issues are arising. And not only those, there's the environmental concerns. Um, once you put it out there, you can't take it back. You can't you know, say, well, we made a mistake and now we, we just won't grow it anymore because it's self-replicating pollution that just there's no control over it. The risk that has been taken to put these, I believe, dangerous products, not only to us, but to the entire environment, the risk taken to put those out, lar largely in secret, seems incomprehensible. Just so a private corporation can make yet more money? That's right, and, and uh, the risk of uh, contamination with the neighboring farms and our or organic um, uh, export business here in Canada, uh, especially now that they're considering uh, uh, growing genetically modified alfalfa here. Um, yeah, there's tons of uh, health risks for sure. Uh, the honey bees are disappearing uh, because of the such a it's been such a dismal failure. This idea of uh, genetically modified crops, uh, uh, the Weeds have grown stronger, the bugs have gotten more adapted to the, the pesticide sprays, and, and so now they're finding they have to spray more uh, in order to get the same result. And so this excessive uh, pesticide spraying, that and, the, and the, what they've seen as um, um, uh, poor quality uh, pollen from these GM plant, plant, plants, that has been a contributing factor to the honeybees disappearing. And that's really serious business because once the honeybees go, I think Einstein was the one that said um, yeah. humanity is going to be gone like four years later. I mean, yeah. honeybees are the, the primary insect responsible for pollinating you know, the vast majority of our food supply. So when the bees are gone, our food is gone. It's a scary situation when our governments put into the general environment and into our food supply um, things that really I think you can say are now they're not safe. You, you can certainly say that they're not safe. I would certainly say they're dangerous to our health. And for our government to allow this, it just seems almost, well, you used to say it was beyond belief, but now it's what they do every day. Well, the interests are there. I mean, you take a look at, I mean, you really should be looking at dichotomies like rich people and poor people. Rich people who control corporations want genetically modified organisms and they're using that to control its food supply. It's just a game for them of control and profits. And the fact that it's happened shows, I'm afraid, the complete and total corruption of our, of our country. The politicians allow it, the corporations 
call the shots. They're the puppeteers. And the media largely keeps it all secret because literally month after month, year after year, the media is completely silent on this issue. And, and I, I mentioned this the last time I was here, and I'm going to mention it again. There's also um, the risk of uh, contamination of our food with human genes. There's 3,200 acres of rice being grown in Kansas right now that, with human traits in the wide open. Nothing to stop it from spreading to the neighboring farms, nothing from getting from uh, stopping it from cropping up anywhere. I mean, look at the genetically modified wheat that was found growing in Oregon not too long ago. I mean, nobody knows where it came from. It hasn't been legally grown in the States for years. But now it's and showing so, up. Yeah, and, now, and we have no labeling in Canada. There's no mandatory labeling of genetically modified food. When we go shopping in the grocery stores. About 80% of the food that we buy, whether it's, um, it's either genetically modified itself or it contains genetically modified ingredients. Right. So with no, without mandatory labeling, we don't know what we're eating. No. Now, again, we have to raise the question of where are our governments? I think, I, think, I mean, the number I've seen is 75 to 85 percent of Canadians want genetically contaminated foods labeled. Even though it's never mentioned in the media, somehow people know that this is a problem. Is that a correct number, 75 to 85 percent? I'm not sure of the numbers, but I know that they're high and people are, more people speak up and let their voices be known, the higher that number grows. Well, you know what? It should be the role then of the federal government to poll Canadians, find out what we want, and then do it. I mean, how corrupt, this is an issue of public safety and I mean is the government simply a bunch of crooks uh, it's are, they, yeah. it's are they willing to to undermine the health of the people of Canada in order to allow a few corporations to make money is that is that where we are it is where we are it sure feels that way it doesn't feel like they're working for us it doesn't feel like they're working for the general population that's for sure no I mean you wonder, well, what are, what are these people doing in Ottawa? I mean, they're elected, they're there. What are they sitting around twiddling their thumbs? I mean, No, they're very busy allowing things like this to happen. I know, yeah. but you know, you'd think that... Destroying the economy, maybe I should subverting write a private our society. Bill. Maybe I should just go ahead and do something. You know, maybe the leader of my party doesn't like it. Yeah. But that's usually the case, you know. Well, we have a couple here. I mean, we have... Um, Murray Rankin of the NDP is our federal member of parliament in Victoria. Mr. Garrison uh, of the NDP. Yeah. Um, uh, Elizabeth May of the Green Party. Yeah. Well, at least you can say, I, I, I mean, I, you know what? Maybe they are doing something, but then the media won't report it. I know. So and that's we why we have to be cautious because there are usually is something's happening. Some, some good person is slaving away and not getting any recognition. That's right. We need more independent media yeah. outlets is what we need. Yeah. 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 So the, get, let's get back to the march against Monsanto. Once again, it's October 12th. It definitely Saturday. is, yeah. Uh, be at the legislature around 1-ish. Yeah, around 1-ish, yeah. The march Gather, is yeah. at one thirty. Yeah, I'll, I'll get um, some. Why, I mean... Why should people come? I mean, basically... Well, because we don't even need genetically modified food. I mean, they, it, was, it was made with so-called intent to feed the hungry, but mm, the world already produces more food than it yeah, needs to yeah, feed yeah. the world's population. Is, if, do your research. Uh, look all over the internet. Go to the, the um, United Nations website. I mean, there's science out there that dictates that we create way more calories every day than, than, than the, the people need in order to survive. The issue has always been access to the food. It's getting the food to the people who need it. And if we spent just a fraction of the money that we spent creating war on some shipping and handling charges, our hunger issues would be solved. Yeah. Boy, you know what? That is the truism of, of the world, the secret truism of the world, that if we what's wrong with the people who run this planet? Why are they so focused on war and the huge expenditures on war? And Because it's money. It's all yeah. about money. And, it's and always somebody making money off of war. Just keeping people fed. You know, we could be doing so much better. It's... 
Well, the genetically modified crowd, I think, are scrambling right now because uh, trying to get money back for their investors who've been uh, investing in their, their products for, for decades now. Um, the, there's new technology out. I don't know if you guys have heard about it yet, but it's uh, uh, a product that's been developed in Ireland called Viaqua. And uh, it's a simple device. You can, uh, it's smaller than a bread box. You can hook it up to your garden hose. And what it does is it creates, if I can say this right, um, radio waved energized water. It actually makes water wetter than it is. It makes it a better solvent. So it takes, um, it costs, uh, you can charge up thousands of gallons of water inside of 10 minutes, it costs pennies. Uh, it's safe for the environment and it uses no, only in the natural ingredients, uh, sunlight, uh, carbon dioxide. It uses the excess carbon dioxide from the air to, and, and turns it into nitrates in the water and uses it as a free fertilizer in the ground. So it, it's, you spend less money on fertilizer. You spend uh, up to 30% less oh, on it's water. A way of, oh, it's a way of creating a fertilizer and irrigating your, your crops. Okay. Yeah, okay. it, it, uh, it uh, electronic, or electrically uh, magnetized well, water. We've only got a, a minute left, but um, I mean, lately I've been reading that any promise or any hope or any thought that genetically engineered foods were going to be more than regular crops or organic crops, that's, there's no proof of that either. No, the yield's not increased at all. You might get the sharp increase for a couple of years, then a steep decline. Yeah. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't grow more food. Okay. It just doesn't work. The March against Monsanto, October 12th at the legislature, one-ish. One-ish. Yeah. March you, starts at 1.30. Thank you, Laura Wileby, for organizing it and uh, making it happen. Thanks for watching the segment of Citizens Forum. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.